Hey there, good to see you, I'm Todd. So uh, in a recent video here on my channel, I don't know if you will remember this, but there was a video I made where I was editing some raw images in Adobe Lightroom using this late 2016 MacBook Pro here, and it was having a really hard time keeping pace. It was laggy, and, uh, and then later I had to uh, go in and edit out all those awkward pauses in the video. So I picked up a late 2021 MacBook Pro. In this video today, I'm gonna to share with you some of my recommendations for how to uh, set up and configure macOS, some of the small subtle things that you can go in and do in order to make a macOS on a MacBook Pro a little bit better. Some application recommendations for you as well, many of which are free by the way, that you can go and download today in order to make the laptop a little bit better. So whenever I replace an old MacBook Pro with a new MacBook Pro, I avoid Apple's automated migration assistant tool, whatever it is that it's called, the thing that pops up and says, hey, looks like you got a new Mac, you know, you want to transfer everything over from your old uh, MacBook and set everything up. I've had problems with it in the past where, especially with Adobe Creative Cloud, where it transferred a bunch of that content over and then none of the apps worked and I had to go through and uninstall everything from like the guts of the operating system and do a clean uninstall and reinstall of everything. It was really a mess. You know, I just prefer starting over with a fresh uh, operating system without any cruft, without any, you know, random preference files clogging up folders that I'm probably no longer using and whatever. I don't know. I just like starting over brand new. So I avoid migration assistant and I just set up everything uh, new from the start. Now, the first thing I would recommend doing when getting a MacBook Pro is to uh, free up some hard drive space and remove anything that has been pre-installed by Apple that quite frankly, you probably don't need. I mean, it depends on you, depends on what you're doing. Apps like GarageBand or Pages or Numbers or Keynote or iMovie. So if you are in a similar boat, what I recommend doing is coming up here to the Apple menu and then clicking on About This Mac and then going to Storage, click Manage next to the internal hard drive. And then over here in the left column, click on Applications. And here you will see a list of everything that is installed on your hard drive. And when you get a new MacBook Pro, you will look in here and you will see things like GarageBand and Pages and all that. Just click on the application, uh, whichever one you want to get rid of, and then click Delete down the, in the lower right-hand corner. Okay, then there are a couple of changes to the trackpad that I would recommend making. And to do that, you just go to uh, System Preferences, and then you go to Trackpad. And then in here, the tracking speed, I think it's a little bit slow by default. Um, maybe it's just me, but I would recommend, you know, upticking this a little bit, you know, raise it like, you know, two or three notches. It may feel a little bit weird at first, but after a while, you're not gonna have to, you know, the travel distance won't be as far on the trackpad. And I think you'll probably end up liking it. The second thing that I would recommend changing in here is by default, this tap to click uh, option here is disabled. Would definitely recommend enabling that because then you uh, you don't have to like do like a full click down on the trackpad in order for it to register. You can just do a tap instead. The tap to click is just so much nicer and softer. Okay, so speaking of the trackpad, the next thing that I would recommend setting up is three finger drag. And this is not in the trackpad settings. It's, it's rather kind of buried in the accessibility settings. And what this allows you to do is instead of you know clicking on the trackpad and holding it down in order to move windows around, you can just use three fingers instead. So when the mouse pointer is over the top, uh, like handle, so to speak, whatever that thing is called, the toolbar, I don't know. You just use uh, three fingers on the trackpad and then you're able to move it around to wherever you want. I just think it's a little bit smoother, a little bit nicer than you know having to click and hold. So anyway, if you wanna try it out uh, for yourself, you come in here to accessibility and then you come down here to uh, where did it go? You come down here to pointer control, and then you go to trackpad options, and then in here you will see enable dragging with three finger drag as one of the options. Okay, the next thing that I always do on a new uh, Mac is come in here to mission control, go to hot corners, and then assign desktop as the lower right hand corner action. Then you can just, you know, mouse down into the lower right hand corner, everything moves away, and you're able to grab the file, drag it into another app, whatever it is you're trying to do. It's basically like a show desktop function. Quick and easy, really simple change. And of course, you can go in and, and configure whatever you want for the other three corners, but I'm just so in the habit now of having desktop in the lower right. Works well for me. Maybe you should give it a try as well. Okay, the next thing that I would recommend disabling is True Tone. To do that, you come in here to System Preferences, go to Displays, 
And here you will see True Tone enabled by default. I always disable True Tone. And if you are someone who edits uh, photos or videos or does any kind of design work, anything where color is important, you definitely do not want True Tone enabled because True Tone automatically changes the hues and the colors that you see on screen to be a little bit nicer with whatever ambient light is around you. So if you're like in the sunshine or if you're indoors and depending on the color temperature of the light, the operating system is going to skew all of the colors. That just spells trouble when it comes to color accuracy because that, that's not what you want at all. So anyway, if you do any kind of creative work, definitely disable True Tone. Then in the same window, you will see in the lower right hand corner, a button labeled Night Shift, which kind of sounds like one of those like late 80s hair metal bands or something like Night Shift. Anyway, Night Shift is very similar to True Tone in that it shifts uh, and changes the, the color temperature and the hues and the colors that you see on screen, except this functions at night and it makes the screen warmer. It removes blue light from the display and it will change the color temperature to be more yellowy and orange and less blue because as you may know, uh, when you expose your eyes to blue light, it's the equivalent of exposing them to sunlight and it tends to kind of mess up with your equilibrium. And especially if you're not doing any creative work at night anyway, and you're just using it to browse the web or whatever. I mean, I would recommend coming in here to night shift and then go to schedule and then set this to uh, sunset to sunrise. While you're in here, next thing I would recommend doing is increasing the resolution of the display. I always find the default resolution to be a bit low, which makes uh, the user interface and the icons and buttons and panels and all these things to be bigger uh, than I like, which thus reduces the amount of visual space that you have for editing photos and stuff like that. So I always like to create more space by increasing the resolution, but you know, everyone's going to be different here. I'm going to keep increasing the resolution until my eyes give out on me. I'm sure at some point I'm going to need default, but I'm going to keep using uh, you know, the highest resolution that, that I can get away with for as long as I can. Then you will see this button down here labeled Universal Control. Now, if you're not familiar with this, this is a brand new feature that Apple is currently they're kind of like slowly rolling it out. You're able to, you know, move the mouse pointer to the edge of one screen and it just magically uh, appears on the other. And you can even move documents over. You can copy things over. And this is especially great if you have an Apple iPad, because with an iPad, you don't have a keyboard, but you're able to move things around and you can just move the mouse pointer right over to the mouse, to the, uh, to the iPad and then back again, which is so cool. And I bet like I don't know, 10, 15 years from now, it's going to be just such an inherent, intrinsic part of the operating system and part of the experience that people aren't even gonna think about it anymore. They're just gonna be like, you know, wow, can you believe that people actually use these machines without that feature in the past? Like, what did they ever do? It's probably gonna turn into one of those things. But anyway, this is very, very new at the time of this video. But if you see that universal control button, it means that your Mac uh, does technically support it but whether other devices, other Apple devices support it, uh, it's probably gonna take a little bit of time. But one thing you can go ahead and do is just come in here and enable, allow your cursor and keyboard to move between any nearby Mac or iPad. Just go ahead and turn this stuff on. And then, uh, you know, when the time comes and you have uh, something that you're able to connect and something you're able to, uh, to use with universal control between machines, you'll be able to do so. The next tweak that I would recommend is to open up the Finder and then come up here to uh, the View menu and then select Show Path Bar. Now this is going to add a little, uh, a little like breadcrumb navigation down here to the bottom of all of the Finder windows that you open. And this is great because not only does it, you know, just visually give you some sense of where you are in the file hierarchy of your hard drive when you're moving around, but you can also use this as well. You can click on you know, the links that are in here in order to be, you know, traversing back up, uh, you know, to, you know, wherever it is that you came from. And it's just a really nice thing that is disabled by default. And I think it makes the finder a lot better. All right. So those are a few of my favorite settings and changes to make to the Mac OS operating system, just to make it a little bit nicer, make the experience of it a little bit better. But I would love to hear from you. If you are a Mac user and there are some things that you would recommend changing, please feel free to leave a comment below. Let me know down in the comments, share it with me, share it with other people watching this video. Uh, let us know what it is that you're changing. These are apps that I use. These are like the first things that, that I installed on this new MacBook Pro here. Uh, beginning with 
Dropbox. And this is part of the reason why I skipped that whole migration assistant thing that I was talking about earlier, because technically I don't have anything to migrate because it's all in the cloud or it's all saved to an external drive, like an external SSD drive that I can just plug into the laptop here or plug into my desktop back there. So on the internal drive here on this MacBook Pro, I only have the Mac OS operating system and applications and nothing else. If I have a document, it goes into Dropbox. And the second reason Dropbox is really important to me is because Dropbox is where I store uh, all of my data for the next application on this list, which is 1Password. 1Password is a password management application that effectively breaks the bad uh, habit of using the exact same one password across all the different websites that you sign into, all the different services that you may subscribe to. So I have it on my laptop, I have it on my phone, my tablet, my desktop. Anywhere I go, I just have to install uh, Dropbox, install 1Password, and I have all my passwords and all my documents and my data, and I'm ready to go. Next app I recommend is Caffeine. Caffeine is a toolbar application. And what this does when you toggle it on and off, you'll see that you know the cup is empty or it has some steam coming out of it. It temporarily disables your screensaver. It prevents the, uh, the display uh, from going to sleep. It effectively disables the energy saving settings of the display, which is uh, helpful if you are say recording your screen like I'm doing right now, or if you're giving some type of presentation. And this just makes it really simple. You just, you know, put some coffee in the cup, give it some caffeine and the display uh, won't go to sleep. My next recommended app is Top Notch. If you buy one of these new MacBook Pros, you may notice that there is a rather pronounced black notch up here at the top of the display, similar to what you would see on, you know, like a new iPhone. Well, if that bugs you, and if you really don't want the notch on, on your laptop, one of the, you, you can't, get rid of it entirely, but you can camouflage it. You just come up here, enable top notch, and then the entire top menu bar turns black, effectively camouflaging it so you don't have to look at it anymore. All right, next app I recommend is Copy Clip. This is another menu bar application, very discreet, very simple little app that extends the clipboard of the Mac OS operating system uh, to effectively give it a history state. You click on it and here is the clipboard history that I just copied. So then I can just select one of these, it is copied to my clipboard, and then I can just paste it into whatever document I'm currently editing. All right, my next recommended app is Rectangle. If you are the type of person who has you know, multiple windows open on, on your display, and you try to you know size and scale each one and position them side by side and get them just so, get them just right, I think you're going to love Rectangle because Rectangle automatically uh, resizes and scales and pins windows to different areas of the screen, like to the top, to the side, to the bottom. And there's all different types of configurations and options, which you can see by coming up here to the top menu and clicking on the icon. And you can see all the different window positions and options here, including their keyboard shortcuts, which is really simple because all you have to do is just hold down control and option on the keyboard. And then you're able to, you know, quickly move, you know, the document left and right, do a half and half type of thing on the top or the bottom. You can also do uh, two thirds on either side. You can also do the enter key and that takes it up full screen. It's just so much faster just to, you know, hold down control and option and just press the appropriate key and automatically snap the windows where you need them to be. All right, my next app recommendation is for those of you who um, who like to take screenshots as part of your workflow. And you wanna take a screenshot of either, you know, everything on your screen or a particular window or a particular area of the screen. You just come up here and I'm gonna do another crosshair uh, screenshot here. And then you press the capture button and then it opens up here in sketch. And then you have all these tools over here in the left menu bar where you can draw, you know, squares and circles and lines and shapes and text and, you know, annotate it with all kinds of things. I especially like uh, the arrow, like the the automated uh, resizing arrow tool, because you can just, you know, point at something, you know, like, look at this when you're sharing something like over Slack or over, you know, some type of messaging app or whatever. It's just perfect for that type of use. And then when you, you know, have annotated the image however you want, you just come down here to this little tab, click on it, drag it out to your desktop, and then it saves a uh, ping to your desktop. Really simple, really easy to use. I love using this for screenshots. And again, it's free, so check it out. Next recommended app is TextMate. This is a free open source text editor uh, for Mac OS. And this is actually what I was just using a second ago when I was copying and pasting some text. Now these types of text editors are most commonly used by uh, developers, by coders, but really anyone can benefit from having a text editor, especially for things like 
when you need to copy and paste pre-formatted text, like there's been some styling applied to it, you can just copy that style text, drop it into a text editor like this, and that strips all the styling out. Select it again, copy, and then paste it wherever it needs to go. And it's just helpful for all kinds of things. And it's definitely better than text edit that is built into uh, the operating system. And honestly, I'd also just rather like uh, the flower icon down on the dock. I know that's kind of a silly reason, but I love it. Anyway, free, open source, doesn't cost a thing. It's been around for a while, works great. Check out TextMate. And then from there, I will download the other apps that I need, you know, things of course like Spotify, uh, Adobe Creative Cloud, you know, I use a bunch of Adobe apps. I'll probably end up throwing DaVinci Resolve on here as well. Uh, at some point, haven't done so yet, but that is the plan because I'm starting to use DaVinci uh, more now instead of Premiere. And that's about it. I mean, I don't feel like I really need anything else on my laptop here, but if you have a recommendation for me, if there is something uh, that I may not know of or other people watching this video may not be aware of that you would recommend. Bonus points for anything that is free or cheap. Please feel free to leave a comment below. Let us know, uh, you know what it is that you're using, what it is that you would recommend. Do so down below in the comments. I want to thank you for your time and attention. If you learned something from this video, if one of my tips uh, proved helpful, if you learned about a new app in this video today, please take a moment and give this video a thumbs up down below. I would appreciate it. And if you would like to keep in touch and see my next video, which will probably be out in a few days, also hit the subscribe button while you're down there. That is it for me. I will see you in the next one.